Moving on, solving systems of linear equations. And all the examples that I've given you so far have given you two lines with two variables. And so we can see that there is a precise either point of intersection or parallel lines or the same line. Now we're going to, like I said before, crank up the heat a notch, and we're going to see what else we can, in fact, do with this. And we can change it from a two-dimensional image into a, as you see here, a three-dimensional image. So we have three equations with three variables. And so now we want to figure out what is the point of intersection between all three of these lines. Okay, we can still do this by substitution or elimination. Unfortunately, we will not be able to check it by using the graphing calculator, but we can always check it by substituting our values back in. Okay, let me run through how each of these methods work. So, if you wanted to do this by substitution, pick one variable that you wanted to solve for. I most likely would pick x or y in the first equation because it's the easiest to solve for. And then you would substitute it in to the second and third equation. This should reduce it down to a two by two, where you have two equations with two variables. And you can solve it just like normally. If you wanted to do this by elimination, what you would need to do is you would need to pick two equations, eliminate one variable, pick two different equations, doesn't matter whether it's the second and third or the first and third, and eliminate the exact same variable, and then again, you will have reduced it down to a two by two, two equations with two variables. It doesn't matter. Use the method that you prefer, whether it's substitution or whether it is elimination. I'm going to do elimination. Again, that's my preferred method, but I think substitution works equally as well on this problem because you have nice variables like x and y in the first equation to solve for. Okay, I'm going to choose to eliminate the z variable. And I'm going to choose to start that by pairing up my first two equations. So when I do that, I need to multiply my first equation times 2, and that will eliminate the 2 with my second equation. So that gives me a 2x plus 2y minus 2z is equal to negative 2. And then I add that to equation 2 as is. So that gives me a 6x minus y. My two z's cancel out, and that is equal to 14. So I have reduced it down to one equation with two variables. Now I need to do this again, but I need to do it again by partnering two different equations. So I'm going to partner my first and third equation. But if you wanted to partner the second and third one, that works just the same. Okay. Now to eliminate the z variable, I'm going to multiply equation 1 times 3, times a negative 3, in fact, because they're the same signs, and I need to make sure that they have opposite signs. So this gives me negative 3x minus 3y plus 3z is equal to 3. And now when I partner it with equation 3, You can see that my z's are exactly the same number, but opposite signs, so those cancel out. So I have a negative x minus 5y is equal to 8. And if you look at these here, you see that you've reduced it down to examples that we have just been doing. So we have two equations with two unknowns. 6x minus y equals 14, and negative x minus 5y equals 8. And now you basically get to reset yourself. So now we're trying to solve this system of equations, and again, you can do it by substitution or elimination. Do the method that you prefer. I prefer the elimination method, so that's what I'm going to continue with. But if you prefer the substitution method, please continue to do so. Okay, I'm going to choose to eliminate the x's 
for no good reason, maybe because they're opposite signs of each other. And I'm going to do that by multiplying my second equation by 6. So that gives me a negative 6x minus 30y is equal to 48. And if I partner that up with my first equation, and I add those two guys together, my x's cancel out, and I get negative 31y is equal to 62. When I solve for this by dividing by negative 31, I get that y is equal to negative 2. So I have one of my three answers. I have three answers here, an x variable, a y variable, and a z variable. So I found my y variable. Now, your instinct might be to plug it back into one of the original equations, but in fact, that doesn't do us any good because that has three variables in it. So what we need to do is we need to plug it back into one of the equations with two variables in it, either this one or this one. Doesn't matter, whichever one looks the easiest to you. I'm going to plug it back into this one. So that gives me a 6x minus, where my y is a negative 2, is equal to 14. So this is positive 2. If I were to subtract 2 from both sides, that gives me 6x is equal to 12. Divide by 6, and so that gives me x is equal to 2. So that gives me a second variable. Now I can take both of these and plug them back into the original equations to figure out the third variable. So let me do that over here, kind of all over the board here. This gives me, I'm going to plug it back into the first one. That one looks the easiest. So my x variable is 2 plus my y variable is negative 2 minus z is equal to negative 1. I see that my 2 and negative 2 actually cancel out. So when I go to solve for this negative z, I just divide by a negative 1, and I see that z is equal to 1. So that's my third answer. Now, just like before when we were trying to come up with answers and we had ordered pairs, because that was their point of intersection, the final answer here is what's called an ordered triple, because I have x, y, z. So make sure to put these in order with your x variable first of 2, your y variable second of negative 2, and your z variable third of 1. Now, I cannot graph this by the graphing calculator because it doesn't use three dimensions. But you can always check these, the same with the 2 by 2, by substituting those back into each and every equation to make sure that they are, in fact, true equations. And so I will let you do that on your own to confirm that we have the right answer. And box that answer and hand it in. And so now we have just solved an example of solving a system of equations that's given us three equations with three unknown variables.